Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Here's a new project we're working on. We're gonna be doing a Meadowbrook cart, a harness, and the doll to drive, and a driving whip. And you can see this cart is fit, gonna fit a regular size traditional, such as a Giselle model. You can make adjustments if you want to make it bigger or smaller. And the doll is the Brayer small head traditional scale doll. And I've used color in mine because of a fun little card I saw for sale on Kijiji, a real card. So let's get started. You can find the link to the pattern down below. And I really appreciate everybody's support of my channel. In the pattern, it will explain how to upscale or upsize a pattern or downsize a pattern. You see the difference when I apply a different model here. Now with this, you may want to make it slightly bigger so that it fits a larger traditional like this Cleveland Bay. Now I've suggested you may want to make it 5% bigger. I also have information on how to make it a Barbie scale, a classic scale, and even a stablemate scale. You'll find all that in the pattern. For the first stages, I'm going to be using some quarter inch brass strips. They're 0 0.032 width. I have some brass metal here that is three millimeters, and that's going to be for the axle. I have two wheels. They're 120 millimeters across, and I have eight by eight millimeter balsa wood. Package of popsicle sticks, the regular ones, plus a few of the larger ones. And I have some barbecue skewers, sandpaper, and some smaller metal pieces that we'll discuss later. To start the cart, we're gonna begin with the wheels. I'm gonna do each section or area separately, but I actually worked on a lot of the parts together. But this way I wanna make sure we get one whole piece set up and you can see the finished product, which is the wheel. Now the reason mine is painted turquoise is due to the, uh, the cart that I liked when I was looking through some of my stuff. And because this meadow brook cart is generally used as an exercise vehicle, you can basically paint it any size you want, color you want. Now I had some of this uh, teal leather left over and I'm gonna use that for the seats. So that is why I chose this color. Let's get started with the wheels. To prepare the wheel, the first thing I did was put it into hot water for about five seconds because this will disintegrate and go to goo very quickly if you can leave it in heat too long. And then I just laid it flat till it got cool. To prepare the wheel hub, I've taken a washer or bushing, it has the uh, metal washer with a little rubber behind it, and I glued that onto the wheel. And then I took a small uh, nut and glued that on top. And from there, I'm gonna take these lolly beads, which are used for nails, like literally nails, and I'm gonna take my largest one and I'm gonna glue that on top here. And I'm gonna take some smaller ones and I'm gonna put them around the edge to look like nail heads or bolt heads. To set these, I'm using a wire tip jewel setter, and a little bit of Uhu glue, and just dipping the bead in the wire setter into some glue and then just popping it on and then pushing it into place. Watch for you're happy with the hub, the way it is. You can prime the full wheel, prime both sides and everything. The only part that needs to be free is there for the axle. Now, if you were using silver studs and you wanted to keep them silver, you could prime and paint it first and apply the studs later. Here you can see the wheel in primer with the hub. Now I'm gonna paint that. Now the wheels are painted and dry. What I'm going to do is take a piece of craft foam and with the width of the wheel, I'm going to cut a thin piece of craft foam the same thickness all the way around and it has to be long enough to wrap around the entire wheel. Okay. 
Once that is cut, glue the piece of rubber around the wheel. And when you get to the end, trim that so it butts up neatly and you'll have your rubber for the wheel. putting glue all the way around first, directly onto the rubber. And then spreading it out. And then from there, I will start rolling it. Now your wheels are done, we're gonna move on to the frame. The second part we're gonna work on is the main frame area. And uh, there's a lot going on in there and this is the main structure. This is the front and this is where the seats will go right here. I'm gonna start with a brass strip, a quarter inch wide and 0 0.032 thickness. And using the pattern, which you can find linked below, we're going to start bending this. So to do that, we're going to start at the side, put a line for the first bend, using something to hold it with, hold it just on the other side of where the bend is, and bend it. This is actually easy to do without being on the camera. Once you've got the first bend done, you're gonna do the same one, the next one the same way. So draw on a line, hold it just away from the bend because it's gonna have a bit of a roundness to it and bend that. Compare it and bend it till you've got it right. And do the next one accordingly. There we've got the frame started and ready to go. Once the frame's cut to size, cut off the end here, leaving enough to glue to the wood at the top. Then take the two frame pieces out, and if you want to, if you're interested in coloring them, paint them with a paint that's good for metal. Before painting them, you may want to send a uh, a little bit of sandpaper and rough up the edges, rough up the metal before you're painting it. I'm going to take the wider popsicle stick and cut two of the floor sides. And I'm going to use my saw for that right here. Two of those done, just sand the edges a bit. And they're gonna fit right there in the frame. With four of these cut out, I am going to glue two of these together and another two together. So I'll have a thicker side, thicker piece for both sides. As those are drying, I'm going to take 16 popsicle sticks and I'm going to sand the end down just a little on both sides. What I want to achieve is a look something like that. So we can do that on both sides. 
And we're going to need 16 of them. Once these are dried, take sandpaper and make that as neat as possible to make it look like one solid piece. Once you've prepped your popsicle sticks in these floorboard pieces, then take them and give them a coat of wood stain. Before going forward any further, make sure your glue is strong. I've glued this piece of brass to a popsicle stick and it is took a lot to pull off. So I'm happy with that glue. Also, while I was painting my uh, popsicle sticks, apparently I missed a pretty good size earthquake. So uh, apparently being over bending over painting is a good way to miss a good earthquake. Here I've got the frames painted and the stained wood. What I'm gonna do is put five of these and glue them on along here. And I'll probably rough up this edge from the paint to make sure it glues properly. So five along here, and then this is going to glue like that. So five spanning the width between here and here, and you want this part, the end, to come just to the edge of the metal. You can see how I've glued them on. You make sure everything is running parallel and that there's enough room for this piece once those are dry. There's a little tiny bit of space in between them, which is what is generally used in real life. So once that's dry, I'm gonna glue these pieces on. One good way to tell if they're even is if a stick is just placed here and meets just the ends as it does here. And that gives you an idea that you're standing even. When you're adding in these side pieces, make sure they line up with the edge to the outside and that they fully attach to the edge, this piece. So I've used weights on both sides because this piece was just a little expanded. So while it dries, I just weight it down. Once these are dry, lay six more across here to there. Once these are dry, put five more along the front panel and let them dry. This kind of detailing is completely optional, but if you do choose to add these studs, make sure they're lined up over top of the piece below to make it look like it actually goes through the different layers. Working on the seat frame, I've got a half inch piece of the brass and I'm using it to bend around the pattern. When you're bending, use a tool big enough so that when you place it on there, it covers the full amount of the metal and that there's a straight line through here. Otherwise, you're going to get a twist. Once I've finished bending it, I am going to cut this to size once I've bent that piece of metal, you can see I've got the balsa wood that I'm going to be using for shafts laid down here. And when they're sitting on top, this metal should sit on the lower part and something flat should sit smoothly between the two shafts and the piece of metal in between. And that's just to double check that it's working correctly. Once you're done, apply a little glue to there and glue that down. It doesn't have to be perfect. It'll be wedged in once you've uh, attached it to the cart. Another piece of the same metal and cut a piece long enough to go from corner to corner that's not the glued side. and then glue that in as well. Once that's glued, give it a prime and then coat it in the same way you did the other metal. I'm gonna do mine in black with a gloss finish. Now that this piece is dry and painted, I'm gonna take the main frame piece and I'm going to mark the center points between here and here with my pencil. And once I have the lines, 
I'm going to take the middle frame and with the uh, join pushed this way and this centered, I'm gonna glue that on, making sure it's straight and in the center. You can see here, I have that pushed all the way up to the raised section. Now we're gonna look at fitting the shafts. When you take the piece of balsa wood and start it at the back, this piece or join is going to be approximately the horse's back end. And at the front, you want that to sit around the horse's shoulder point. So that's gonna be your approximate shape. Now we're gonna do a tiny bit of shaping, which is optional to get it closer to the horse if necessary. To make the shaft, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this to around 17 inches, depending on the size of your horse, 17 inches should be good enough for anything. And then cut that off to make it workable. Of course you can saw that off or whatever. Now, Next, from one end, mark around eight and a quarter inches. And then take a piece of duct tape and wrap that on that side. And what that's gonna do is protect the square end of the shaft. So this is the shaft that's gonna to attach to the buggy. Now using a coarse grit sandpaper, sand the other end by turning it as you go and sand this entire end. And that's gonna give you a rounded end. Now, the more you sand it, the nicer it's gonna look against the horse, but the more delicate it's gonna be. So choose how much you wanna sand that. And the twisting, make sure you keep it round. So you wanna get rid of those ends and make this in a nice round piece. It doesn't take long to do, but it can get hot. So you're gonna to have to keep uh, just doing it a little bit at a time. I'm sanding this end a little thinner than this end so it tapers down. I have put this piece on a book about the same height as the wheel. So the wheel's gonna run through there. And I've taped on the shafts where they belong. So you can see that the horse's butt's gonna come to there. And we want the shaft to end around the center of his shoulder. Now if I take this model out, and stick in a different one. Again, lining that up at the same spot. You can see it's gonna be a little shorter this time. So you're gonna determine where you wanna cut this if you're gonna use it on multiple models. Based on the horse's shape, the shaft should come in a little around here and then straighten up. So I'm gonna cut it to fit this horse and mark that and cut that off and round the end first with sandpaper. To bend the shafts at around the 10 inch and 14 inch ends, I'm going to spray that with Windex and that's Windex with ammonia. And I'm just gonna let that sit for at least half an hour. Now to bend it with just the slightest bit of pressure and something round, just hold it so lightly or it might break. And that is all you need to get that bend. And now if you look at it, you'll see both of them are bent. And on the horse, that'll be just enough. Once I've got my bends figured out, I'm looking to where I'm gonna cut that about there to match both of my horses. I'm gonna cut that off and then round it with uh, sandpaper. After doing that small bend, you can see how perfectly they sit next to this horse now. Depending on your model and wheel size, the way I have it set up with a pattern, on this model, this sits right here, and I mean, within that area is good and I'm happy with that. However, if you want it higher, you can put a little wedge of wood under here while you're assembling it. 
and that'll bring it up higher. That is easier than trying to bend the wood to fit. To create tip protectors on the end of the shafts is the rounded end. You can paint them in silver, gold, or black, and then let that dry. Once that's dry, I'm gonna take some electrical tape and starting at approximately three and a quarter inches from the tip and ending at around half an inch, quarter an inch from this end, I'm going to wrap this tape around. And this will provide the protection, shaft protection. Try to make it tight and even. Now that the ends are taped, I'm gonna take a tape again right at the join. I'm gonna put another wrap, just tape width, right there, and that's it. With the shaping to the inside, we're gonna glue these both on at the back. And you wanna make sure they're lined up at the back here and that they are glued onto the front. And then I've used something, shot glasses, to support them at the right level. And I'm gonna make sure that dries properly. So a little bit of glue and I'm using the Yoohoo glue Once I've got that on, I'm still gonna put a light weight on there so that it dries properly. Now we're gonna build the seats. For the seats, these top three pieces, you need to cut two from three millimeter balsa wood. So we'll cut two each of those. And to do that, you can use a hacksaw or a good uh, sharp box knife like that. And for this one, you're gonna cut that from the wider popsicle stick. So what I do is generally cut the ends here and then round the edges with sandpaper. And here, right here, we're also gonna round these two ends with sandpaper as they're shown in the actual pattern in red. These two side pieces on the wood, you can see that they're the same angle. So what I do is I cut one of them by carefully lining up the straight line down the middle, which requires a little bit of uh, pressure and care. So that once I have cut the one cut, I can turn that around and cut the second one. I have these all cut out and I've sanded one of each of these. Now I'm using a 180 grit sandpaper. The amount of curves you put on each of these is just for visual effect. You can do whatever you want. You can curve it a little, a lot, or leave it square. And also with the extra roughness, just give that a quick sand. Don't over sand it and do that on all the pieces. To get the same curve on the end, you can also stack them together. I was looking from the front of the cart to the back. This is the way the seats are gonna be assembled. This is the one seat and this is the other seat. So let's start with one. I need to put this up here and this to join. However, I want them to lean out a little. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lean them out the way I want, take a little piece of sandpaper and miter that end a tiny bit so that when you sit it down, it leans out. Same with this one. It's gonna be up there, lean back, and sand that. So that when you put them together, they're gonna to fit. Now I need to sand this one. So this needs to be sanded this way a little. And this needs to be sanded this way. So you're sanding them in on the inside of those pieces. So now when I put it together, oops, 
It should have a slight lean to the side and a slight lean to the back. And they're sitting on top of this piece. So once you get those sanded and it looks nice, you're gonna glue that together like that. Now that seat is glued together. I'm gonna do the same with this one. Again, keeping it in mind exactly what it's gonna look like before you put it on so that you get all the sides sanded properly. In my version here, these two aren't butting up perfectly in the middle because that's a little wide. So I'm going to sand down these. These should be, be able to sit completely next to each other. Next, we're going to attach the seats. They're going to sit approximately in the middle of this piece and butt up against each other. Now you have two options here. Let me just show you first what that looks like up there. You have two options. One is to glue them on, or the second, like they would do in real life, is to hinge them. In real life, what happens is the driver comes up, meat driver, they flip up the seat, come in, and then sit down. So to do that, I've got some small hinges here. And if I put them like this, I'll put two of those in there based on the size of my hinges. I'm gonna glue the hinge down and then glue the seat on top so that it freely opens and the little end piece of the hinge is gonna stick out. But before I do that, I've taken a Sharpie and colored it black. So now you can see the difference with the black matches everything else I have. So I'm gonna take two of these hinges, glue them down, making sure they're open. And then once they're dry, I'm gonna glue the seats on top. For the seat cushion, take the pattern and some craft foam and cut this out multiple times. Now, this is a sample of four high, so you could go anywhere from two to four high. So if you want to go too high, cut four of them out, etc. And for the backrest, you'll just need one and just trace that directly on there and cut it a little smaller. When deciding how thick to make it, you can check your doll and see where her feet end up. I find four is too thick for her, so I'm gonna try two. To make the backrest one, I cut it so that it's in a bit on both sides and then rounded the corners appropriately. Once they're cut, glue them together, either two or three or four, whatever, and glue those together. I'm using a piece of suede from Rio Rondo. You can use suede, micro uh, fiber, or any kind of fabric you want for the seats. So what you need to do, we have this piece glued together. I'm gonna glue it to the back of my fabric, leaving enough room so that it can wrap around. And I'm gonna glue the top surface on and let that dry. Once I have these glued on, I'm gonna cut around the edges here leaving me enough room to glue. For each corner, I'm gonna cut along the corner piece, then cut out a bit of a wedge so that I can glue that down and then glue these over top like that and that. Try to keep it as thin, as least amount of fabric at the joins where it goes over. So you may want to cut that also on an angle. So there. Like that. And the same on this piece, like that. Cut that out. So now when it folds in, and then this piece comes in, when this piece comes in, oops, not to cut that, just a little bit more, but you want a nice smooth edge. And then I'm gonna glue that on, down and keep it 
keep it as smooth around the corners as possible. backrest piece I've cut out sections so that when I do glue them on they're not overlapping a lot and then I'm going to glue that down and let that dry. Once that's glued on and dry I'm going to glue that onto the backing seat back. Thanks for joining me in this video. The cart will be finished or completed in video two. At this point I chose my model and then checked the shafts and realized I didn't want them to turn in a little more. So I sprayed more win window cleaner on them and left them weighted like shown here for over a day. So I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe and thanks for joining me.